Hi, Joe Doyle here. As a former bricklayer turned property investor, I would not be where I am today if I didn't force learn the art of business. Nowadays, a big part of my life is helping other tradesmen succeed with their business by sharing my knowledge, insights and experience. Welcome to the Tradesman Support Group Podcast. So, in this episode, the tables are turned. Uh, this is actually taken from a podcast called Breadwinners, which is hosted by Donegal man Porig Hilferty. Uh, I was actually a guest on one of the episodes there a while ago, and Porig was so kind enough to allow us to use the episode here on the on the Tradesman Support Group. So, we thought you might enjoy listening to me getting asked questions for a change. So, have a listen to this, and don't be afraid to... Uh, don't be afraid. Don't forget... To give Porrick's podcast a little uh, a little check out there as well. And uh, let me know what you think. Cheers, guys. Enjoy the episode. This week, my special guest is Joe Doyle, a former bricklayer turned property investor and business mentor from Clondalkin in Dublin. With over 10 years in the game, Joe has seen both boom and bust and at one stage did find himself facing almost bankruptcy. Joe's drive and passion is clear and believes that anyone can be successful. Let's go into episode four of the Breadwinners podcast. I'm joined today by uh, an entrepreneur, a former bricklayer as well, investor and now a mentor as well. Joe Doyle, you're very welcome to the Breadwinners podcast. Thanks for joining us. How are you Pleasure today? Pleasure to be here on this fine day. Joe, like everybody else, we're trying to navigate our way through uh, COVID-19 and uh, suppose how have you been coping first of all that's the first question well, first and foremost my, my family is healthy and I'm healthy so that's pretty much the most important thing everything else can be dealt with around that you know hmm. do you suppose um, uh, your your career to date um, some highs and lows along the way but take me back to where it all first started for you so I started off as a block layer uh, I used to work with my old lad. So my, my dad ran a kind of small building company, you know, um, mm. pretty much all my life when I was a kid, you know. And uh, then on weekends and days off school and all that stuff, myself and a couple of mates used to work with him. And then as we kind of finished up school, we went to work with him and became apprentices with himself, you know. So I started working with him as an apprentice bricklayer. Um, and then sure, by the time I was actually qualified, I actually bought my first house while I was an apprentice. And by the time I was finished qualified, I just said, right, this is not for me. There's no point in me being on the trail all day when I can pay somebody to do what I get done in the day and I can focus on different things. So I just, I bought a house when I was 18, then I bought a bit of ground to build another house and then I bought a bit of ground to build another house and I kind of just started tipping away at that and credit was available at the time, you know. So uh, I was basically buying houses, renting them out, or buying sites and building the houses and renting them out. I never sold any of the properties at the time, you know. And uh, done that for a while, and then the market collapsed. And I, I, what I thought I knew about investing and <laughs> making money in the property market, I realised I hadn't a fucking clue. We all like to say, fuck on this podcast. Mm, you can, yeah. <laughs> I realised I hadn't a clue because it was built on inflated property prices and an abundance of free credits, you know? So uh, that kind of, that shook me up, you know? Um, between that, uh, you know, between the things going wrong and me starting out, I set up another business where I was, uh, I was a construction business. We've done a very kind of clever thing that no one had done before. We basically merged a claim handling business and a construction business together. So, you know, the bath leaks, destroys the kitchen ceiling, um, we were literally getting hundreds of those jobs every month. Um, and that was our business model. We would go in, we would fix the damage, and we would get paid for by the insurance companies. And it was a really good business, and it kept me going all through the recession. Um, it was a difficult business because you had gatekeepers with the insurance companies there trying to stop you getting the money. But it was a good business. Um, you know, it kept a lot of people employed, done a lot of work, made a few quid. Um, the money we made on the back of that, I just kept that, I was rolling that into the properties. And then when the when the proverbial stuff hit the fan, I then got taken back down a peg or two and I realised I had to go back to the start and pretty much start again, you know. Take me back to that um, train of thought, Joe. When, when you said there, uh, I was a bricklayer and you just said, I'm not going to do that for the rest of my life, you know. Where did that spike 
come for you, do you think, to say, right, look, nah, I have bigger fish to fry here? I'm the most competitive person you'll ever come across. And thankfully, I wasn't the best bricklayer in the world. And I didn't like being second best, you know? So, uh, <laughs> I, and then when I done the numbers on it, I realized that the best bricklayers I know were the boys that were making the best money. And, you know, I took pride of making money rather than uh, taking pride of being the best at what I do. So, uh, you just have a few little light bulb moments where you'd be, you'd be rounding up two or three lads to give you a hand doing a job. You know, you'd be putting a gang of lads together. Like, where we worked, there was a lot of tradesmen and everybody kind of intertwined with each other. And then you'd realise then that you could actually pull a job where you'd be making five or six hundred quid on the job plus your day's pay. Or you could make five or six hundred quid and not your day's pay. And in that day, you could be going off generating another, another job. Mm. And I just kind of got clued into... I always wanted to be a property guy. And I got clued into the notion of making money rather than fixating on doing the job. Mm. And, and the mission at that time is just to make money, is it? Or is that well, I, I, wanted to build my, I wanted to build my property portfolio. So uh, like I just, it wasn't worthwhile for me to be laying the blocks on all the properties I was building because you know, when you're building a house, as I'm sure you probably know, there's a lot of stuff goes into it. It's not just, and when you're tying yourself down to one thing, it slows mm -hmm. down. And in fact, as I look back on that kind of period of my life, that was the mistake I made was that I, I was trying to do too much just because I knew how to do something myself. I was doing it. Like, first house I built, I drove the digger, you know, we poured the concrete, we laid, we laid the rising walls, we brought in the other lads to help us put the blocks up just to get it up. You know, we put the rafters in, we put the battens on the wall, we put the plasterboard up, we painted it. I've I done everything myself and a couple of lads, you know. And it was great. You know, it was a great novelty building a house, but uh, it's not the right way. It's, you know, it's what you get done is more important than what you actually do. And was that, I suppose, coming from your, your naivety sometimes before you learned all this, went through the, the, the bumps and the bruises, um, that you said, no, I'm just going to keep you know, bullying on, as they say in Ireland, just keep going and maybe not taking the handbrake up and sitting back and going, hang on a minute, there's there's, there's a little bit of a way here that I can be more effective. Yeah, like, I, I was, you know, I was like, bear in mind at this stage, like, I'm, I'm 18, 19, 20 years of age, and I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? You're building more houses, you're not building another house, another house, like, I was just a kid, I didn't really know what I was doing, you know? Um, but I was just giving it 100% effort. And the mistake I made was the 100%, no, not even the mistake I made, like where I could have done better looking back now, of the 100% effort that I was doing, that I was putting into it, you know, 85, 90% of that effort was going into the doing of the work and 10% was going into the, the business behind the doing of the work, the sourcing of the deals and all that different stuff, you know. So, uh, you know, when I learned that, that was wrong. But the mistake there, party was what happened was, it was like gambling at the races and every time I won something, putting it all on the next one. Mm. You know, that's what I was doing. And then eventually, you know, the music stopped and prices stopped increasing and stuff like that. Just luckily for me that I had set up the business at the time because that was kind of paying me a wage and we were generating a few quid here and there from that. Whereas if I would have been exclusively on the property, I would have been completely snookered, which I ended up completely snookered in the end anyways, you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but look, you, you live and learn, you know. And Joel, just um, looking at your your ambition, yes, um, you know, I think it's uh, it's something that you've you've said on record before that you know you're not motivated by money. Is that fair to say? But you know, it does it does help. But jeez, oh, I I don't know if I said on record that I'm not motivated by money, but I do like making money. Um, but what I seem to love much more than that, like, I don't want to make as much fucking money as I can. I'm, I'm able to make a hundred million quid. Mm. Anything less is failure, you know? But I love the hustle. I love the, the game. I love making the deal, you know? I love all that sort of stuff. And uh, I suppose, you know, I'm fucking motivated by money. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I, I like making money. Now, listen, I don't mm. spend a lot of money on personal stuff. I'm not a big yeah. spender of money. But I definitely love the hustle mm. and the deal and, you know, making it happen. That's that's my like. See this here now, right? Have get an opportunity to chat to a fellow entrepreneur about business. This is my Saturday night. Do you know what I'm saying? 
Mm. I love talking about business and deal making and entrepreneurship. That's my gig. This is this is who I am. You know, mm. it's a bit soul destroying for me to have pointless conversations with people that are just you know I, I class them as pointless. You know, um, mm. I I like to be productive. I, you know, I'm gonna leave this here now. Hopefully, your uh, hopefully your listeners will learn something from here. But I'll definitely learn something from you before we before we wrap up here. And that's the that's the magic of it. You know. And maybe I suppose I should have reframed that question. It wasn't so much about the money. It's, you know, everyone sees money as flashy cars and houses and everything, but it's the process um, that you really dial into. And, uh, you know, is that, is that a common thread, do you think, with an entrepreneurship? Is, is the process a common thread with mm. entrepreneurship? Mm. They, they really just love that. It's the person you become along the way, isn't it? I'll, I'll tell you a very, very quick story here, something that just completely resonated with me over the last couple of days, and I was, I was thinking about it today for some reason. Um, I was watching a, a... I don't watch that much telly, right? I'd watch documentaries and, uh, you know, podcast interviews and stuff like that all the time. But I got, I got glued into watching this thing on Netflix called uh, Ottoman, Rise of the Empire. Did you see that? Rise of Empires. Yeah. About the, the Ottoman Empire, and the guy there, his name is uh, Sultan Mehmed, Mehmed or Mehmed, whatever the way you describe it. And he's basically, he's trying, to con- he's trying to take over Constantinople, which is now Istanbul. And the biggest thing he could ever do in his life was to take over Constantinople, take, kick out the Romans and, and make it uh, an Islamic city. And at the exact end of the, the series or the episodes, everybody's expecting him to have a party because he's, uh, he, he's, he's achieved his goal, you know. And he just sits there and he says, he sits on the throne and he says to his stepmother, shall we begin? You know, and I thought, that's brilliant, you know, because people are connected with me the whole time and they're asking me questions about business and success and all this sort of stuff, you know. And I'm like, I haven't even fucking started. Hmm. I'm, I'm still warming up here, you know. Um, and that's, I think the day that I stop feeling like I'm only warming up or getting going, Maybe that's the day that I'll stop chasing and I'll stop going after the hustle, you know? And that's, that's scary. I don't want to happen, you know? I don't want that to happen. Yeah. And that motivation, you kind of touched on it there. You just you identified it. But obviously, you, you love your, your fitness as well. You, you, you do a lot of that. And that probably um, allows you to have that energy as well. So... Yeah, what, what I do say to, to most, most people, right? So look, a guy would connect with me and he'd ask me a question and I, and I wouldn't know him and we'd be just chatting away. And I'm like, listen, man, I'm not more clever than you. Chances are I could not be more clever than you. Um, chances are I wouldn't be as smart as you in, in certain areas, but I am definitely more focused and I will bet my life I'll be more determined than you. And I, I bet my life I'll be more determined than most people I interact with. In fact, if somebody thinks they're more determined than me, send me a message, I want to be your best friend, you know? Um, because that's that's what I yeah. love to do, you know. Um, just go after things. That's that's the buzz, you know. And for me, my whole motto, my life motto, was mind, body, wallet. You know, mind, tell, body, wallet. Before we go forward, let's go back again, Joe. Because yes. you were relatively young when you were going through a lot of uh, the, the issues you had with the bank and that, you know, and maybe. Yes. Talk, us, talk us through that, you know, that process and what was, what was your mindset at that time and, uh, you know, people that is, and there's still people going through it, uh, unfortunately, in Ireland as well, um, that haven't really dealt with their problem, uh, but you have uh, at a very young age and I suppose maybe you might tell us a bit more about that. Look, every, every, every entrepreneur, you know, has a scare or, you know, ends up facing bankruptcy or gets close to it at some point in their life, you know. I'm just very thankful that I've done that and I've got it out of the way because I ain't fucking going back there now. End the story, you know. It's done. I'm not going back there. And, you know, today I'm at home in my home office. Um, my business is running as normal. My investments are running as normal because every deal that I undertake, I will operate on the basis, what if there's a recession tomorrow? And I protect myself along the way on that. And so I got a, a, a massive learning from that. And what happened when I was going through it was like, oh, like bear in mind, I was like 23, 24, 25 years of age. Because I went down for a good few years. Um, I think I went down from about, say, 20, 26 to, say, 20, 
29. And look, I know I'm contradicting myself there, but it was a, a block of maybe four or five years there where I was just plowing on and like failure was not an option to me. Um, I didn't, I never thought about, well, I thought about giving up. I thought about going bankrupt and all that sort of stuff. And that was the right thing for me to do. But I just didn't want to do it. And it was only when I when I finished it, and I suppose I'm kind of glancing over the, the severity of the situation, but mm. it was only when I finished, I sorted out the issues, I got properties repossessed, I had to pay a lot of money back to the banks, all this sort of stuff. It was like that, did you ever see when it's fog out, but it's it's kind of patchy fog and it's low to the ground? So mm-hmm. when, when I had finished this, within a couple of days, it was like I'd been walking through this fog for the last couple of years and I didn't know until I turned around and I looked back and I could see the fog, if that made sense, yeah? Mm-hmm. So I was like I'd been walking through this fog for years, didn't know what it was, and I looked back and I could see it behind me. And my train of thought just completely changed. I just became more determined. I was like, I turned into an absolute antichrist, you know? I would walk every minute of the day. I was determined to make some progress. And it didn't take very long for me to turn things around, you know? And, and during that time, um, I noted you, you appeared on the uh, Irish Apprentice as well. And Dragon's Den. Dragon's Den. Dragon's Den. Yeah. Tell us about that ordeal. And um, was that, and you were also uh, featured on a, a TV documentary as well? Yeah, yeah. I've been, you know, they... They seem to like me in, in places, you know. So some, sometimes they seem to like me and they want to get my opinion and they want to get me in and whatever else there. So, uh, yeah, we during this time, like, you know, the fact that I was almost bankrupt didn't affect my determination. It affected my train of thought. It affected every single thing, every single thing else. But I wanted to keep going. So uh, I set up a business. Um, well, I told can you call it a business that didn't make any money? Um, a tenant referencing service, because bear in mind what the climate was like in Ireland back then. And uh, I went on to Dragon's Den and, you know, we were successful and we got investment on that. And it was a great experience to go through the process, you know. Um, but I was on Dragon's Den literally pitching for my life because I was, uh, I was bust at that stage, you know. I didn't have any, uh, like, th- that was... You know, I was at the end of the road that it was either pull the pain and go end up completely bankrupt or manage to find a way out. And uh, that was a job. I went in to try and fix that. But I thought a, a way of fixing my issue was to build another business and sell the business and make some money. And uh, great experience getting on the dragon stand. Didn't, didn't make any money. Unfortunately, Barry, who gave me the money, he lost his money. You know, maybe, maybe I should one day look at getting it back from. Um, but look, it, it was a good experience. And then um, RTA had heard about my story. And they, they because, see, the, the thing here, Barry, was that I didn't fit the profile. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I was a bricklayer from Clondalkin. You know, um, one of the, you know, definitely top five worst parts of Dublin at the time, you know. Um, and, uh, I owed millions out to the banks. And they're like, who is this guy? What is the story with him? And then, I, you know, people would be contacting me over the phone or whatever, and I'd rock up, and I'd be just this kid walking up with a pair of dirty blading snickers, trousers on him, saying, yeah, that's me, you know? And uh, I think it was because I didn't fit the profile, you know? Hmm. That's why people took an interest. And take me back to that time because the tenants and reference side, obviously, it, it, it obviously they've probably seen some merits in it. But what were you thinking back at that stage? You know, going right. I need to get an investor here. Where can I get one? Let's go to the Dragon's Den. Was was that the kind of the process you you thought of? Yeah. Well, I like as a as a young aspiring entrepreneur, grown up with no other real business influences in the immediate circle. My dad ran a small building company, but he wasn't really an entrepreneur as such, you know. He was a very self-employed minded man. And I suppose like if I be honest with you, like going on to Dragon's Den for me as a as a young kid was like an opera well, young kid, I was twenty twenty what was I twenty seven then, twenty six, twenty seven. I think I actually say it in the documentary, but I'd applied for it the year before as well with my with my other business and uh, or two years before. But that was a way of validation. I thought, like, if somebody, if one of these guys see me or believe in me, you know, 
that would give me a bit of bit of street cred. And I suppose here we are, seven years later, still talking about it, you know. <laughs> but it takes a lot of courage to do something like that. Was there any, you know, time you go, ah, oh, Jesus? See, look, th- th- this is the thing, Corey, right? Mm. It is much easier to try get rich once in your life than to live your whole life being poor, yeah? Mm. And, and that is the fact. So, you know, you know, if you're poor, you're poor, and if you're rich, you're rich. They're two very clearly defined lines. But when you're on that journey to become rich, you know, and, and, and rich means many different things to people, but when you're on the journey to become financially rich or financially free or wealthy, whatever they look, I just say fucking rich and poor, you know, um, take what you want from it. But when your, your goal is so big, you know, your why, the reason to do it is so big, you don't give a fuck whether you're nervous or not, you know? Hmm. That's it. And I bear in mind, like, you know, I, I always say to people, like, I'm lucky that I came from the land of opportunity, right? So where I grew up was, you know, one of the, one of the, the, the lesser, the lesser better places in Dublin, right? And I, I need to be respectful to, to my community, but look, people know where it is, right? And I was saying then, well, thankfully I'm brought up here because if I was brought up in a more affluent area, I needed a 500 grand mortgage and at least 50 grand worth of cars in the driveway just to blend in with everybody else. Whereas everyone's on fucking welfare, you know, where I was growing up. Mostly mates were at the time, you know. Um, the, there was nowhere to fall if I failed. You know, there was no difference in failure or not trying. Mm. So it, it, never, it, never entered, it never entered my mind. Just even, even now, like, I'm, I'm 100% committed to, like, doing whatever it takes, you know. Um, look... If you said to me, Joe, can we do this at four in the morning? I'm like, sure, what am I doing at four in the morning? I'm only fucking sleeping. Yeah, no worries, man. Mm. Because this is what we need to do, making connections, you know, talking to people, you know, getting in front of people we don't know. This is what helps us succeed as entrepreneurs, in my opinion. So I will literally do whatever the fuck it takes, you know. Without, I won't do it at the expense of my mental health, my physical health, or make my family upset. And those are the the barriers that you've put in to That's get where, where yeah. you are. But, you know, you're, you're, you're a straight-up talker, which is, which is great. Um, but not everybody has that kind of, ah, fuck it, we'll do it anyway, and we'll figure it out. But suppose everybody's trying to look for this perfect time now to, to make a jump or to, to, to go at it, as they say, or to go it on your own, as they say, in Ireland. But from... From where you come from, that fuel to to to, to get the fire in in your belly uh, is that that has given you the, the actual drive and determination to do that. Maybe to not be the polished uh, fellow in a suit and uh, uh, full of education, but just an absolute manic uh, desire to get a result. Yeah, you know, you, like you know, the, the the most famous book on wealth creation is called Think and Grow Rich. And it's written in 1920-something by Napoleon Hill. And any time I even think about that book, there's one, there's one thing that just jumps out at me. And he talks about many, many wonderful things in it. But the one thing that's always top of my mind in relation to that book is there is no cure for a lack of desire. So if you don't have that desire, you're fucked, basically. And every day, I, I look out the window... I, it's a bit really weird and it's a bit kind of cliche and whatever their term is, but I look out the window every day and I'm like, right, what am I going to do today? What has today got in store for me? You know, and I'm like, I'm attacking it. I squeeze the life out of absolutely every day. Like, I can't get one more bit of work done most days. You know, I don't have any downtime. I just, I want to, you know, when you're when you're born in desire is big as big, and when your when your why is as big as as uh, as it can be, everything else is just irrelevant, you know. And dig it in to that why, Joe. What is it? Why I want to do it? Mm. That's actually a very good question. So for me, it's a couple of things on that, and you know, as you go along, you learn them, right? Like. Every time I put a piece of content on social media, there's those who look and say, I'd like to be like Joe. And then there's those who look at it and say, he's a bullshitter. 
you know, yeah. that's not true. You know, and I just talk about stuff and anything, particularly if I put something up about college education, formal education, about taxes, if I put something up about work ethic and people being lazy and stuff like that, you know, it completely polarizes the people, that the, the viewers at all times, you know? And can you, like, can you imagine the kid that looks at my profile as soon as I get to that 100 million and he's the same guy that I was? Like, we'll inspire a whole generation. You know, every piece of content that I've currently put on social media, that will have far more credibility and far more value when I hit my targets. Mm. And that, that, that necessarily is your way. So maybe there's, is, it, is there a legacy here that, Joe, that Joe's looking at achieving that he wants to get yeah. out? Yeah, I suppose like at the same time, um, I remember having a conversation with, with someone before. I went, I went to, uh, and this is the value of networking in the right community. So I went and paid a couple of grand to go to this property course. Can't really remember anything that I learned on it, if I be very honest, because I just went for the networking. It was something that I kind of, you know, it's not that the course wasn't any good. It was very good, but I already knew what, what, uh, what you were teaching. And we went out for dinner. It was in Spain. We went out for dinner one night, and there was a, a lady sat next to me, and I said, so what do you do? And she goes, well, I'm a property manager for one of the biggest landlords in, in the UK. I'm like, oh, great. So she started telling me the story, how she... She worked for this Jewish family who bought a lot of plots of land immediately after World War II and rather than sell them, they kept them and now they're, you know, one of the richest families or one of the biggest landlords, whatever the term was, um, in the, one of the biggest family, one of the biggest landlords in the UK. And in three generations, they, they have absolutely made hundreds and hundreds of millions. And I'm like, holy shit, man, like that's, you know, the whole idea is to create wealth that future generations can add to. And I've, I've put the foundation in there. So look, I've got, I've got a 10-week-old baby. I've got an 18-year-old daughter as well. If I keep going, what I'm doing, I, like I'm, I'm 35 now, I'm 36 later on this week. If my, my daughter is exactly half my age now, and my other daughter, obviously, she's, she's only a couple of weeks old. But if I keep going for another 18 years, can you imagine the size of the portfolio that my daughter could have under her belt when she gets to my age, if she wanted it, you know? Mm. And... All she would need to do is just keep adding to that. And like, that's how a dynasty is created, in my opinion. And I've pretty much done most of the hard work there already. I've laid a solid foundation on it, you know. And uh, there was no, there's no money in my family. There's no money in my social environments. There's no, there's no concept of wealth anywhere in anything in my life except for what I purposely put myself in the way of uh, connecting with, such as, you know, successful people and stuff like that that's that's a that's a big one for me that's what i really want to do you know i want to create wealth that future generations can add to and i want to inspire a generation along the way and i want to show people that you can get mega rich without becoming an absolute asshole you know hmm. and that's something obviously you're very passionate about and obviously we see um you know your 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 career to date joe but you, you've also your your mentoring side of the business now has been um, really important to you. So tell us a wee bit about that. We haven't really touched on that either because um, yeah. we didn't even see your podcaster as well. So um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out the podcast. I mean, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The, um, but, you know, so tell us about that. When, when did you start? Because that's obviously another string to your bow as well. When did, when did you realize? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I love, I love doing, doing, doing the coaching. Like, I've got like 280 clients from all mm. over the country and uh, they're like making a lot more money now purely because of the work we do together, you know? And it's absolutely great, you know? Um, I had a few kind of, uh, a few kind of, uh, did you ever see that movie Shallow Hall where Jack Black's character is in the lift and he bumps into Tony Robbins or he bumps into a hallway and Tony touches him and he, he has a kind of, a, he mm. has a moment. Did you ever see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He yeah. has a vision, you know? I've had a few little kind of, things like that in my life where I really focus on something happening and I made it happen and all that sort of stuff, you know? And it's not that it's spiritual or magical. I just think it's it's the power of determination, you know? So um, how I actually got into the whole mentorship thing, and I didn't I didn't even think anybody would want to listen to what I say. Now we've got literally hundreds of clients and thousands of followers, which is which is good. Um, 
I'll, I'll give you the long version of the story here. I just wrapped up all my, all my bullshit with the bank, for one for better word, because that's all it is, right? And with the banks, should I say, not the bank. And I was on holidays, and I wanted to go and see Grant Cardone. You know Grant Cardone? Indeed, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Grant has been a big influence on my life, and, and he's a really good dude, and, and uh, I'm so happy that I connected him and followed him. So Grant Cardone was having a, the first ever 10X growth conference, and uh, it was on in Miami. I think it was a grand or 500 quid or whatever, all these different things, you know. And I said, right, okay, I'm going there. But if I'm going there, I'm going there to make an impression. I'm not going as any fucking general admission person, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to go there, I'm going to sit in the front row, I'm going to fly first class, I'm going to get a bleeding Rolls Royce to take me to the airport the same way Grant drives a Rolls Royce. I'm just having all these little dreams in my head, right? So I've done the numbers and it was like 40 grand or something like that. No, sorry, it wasn't 40 grand. It was, about, it was about 20 grand to do all those silly things. And that was my way of rewarding myself because I'd just been, spent years fighting bankruptcy and I'd just done a couple of deals and made a few quid. And then I said to myself, hold on a minute, Joe. Don't be going around thinking you're Bertie Big Balls here. You've just made a few quid and you're talking about spending 20 grand on, on like a trip, you know. You can't do that. So I'm literally having a conversation with myself. I'm like, I'll tell you what, as if I was sitting next to myself, I'll tell you what, Joe, <laughs> you, go off, you go off and spend that money if you want on condition that you earn it before you spend it and you earn it from a source that you currently don't already have. So I'm like, right, let me do that. And this was like on the, the 27th, 28th, 29th of December. It was those days between Christmas and New Year's and I was on holidays in Spain. And I just took out my phone and I made a Facebook Live video. And I said, I've, got, I've never done it before. I said, I've got something that I'm going to do for people that's going to be excellent. Um, for, it's going to improve people's quality of life. And my plan was to get a group of uh, clients and not clients, just people, charge them a couple of grand and show them what I'd gone through and come out the far side so that they knew, you know. And uh, we made like 32 grand from that video, you know. And uh, I'm like, whoa, holy shit, like this stuff works. Like, you know, making a big ridiculous goal and going after it, I done that. And I found that people wanted to listen to what I had to say. So, uh I just kept making videos and sharing my story and different things and um, just pushing it. And it just went from there. And then I, you know, I made a lot of money from it and I lost money on different things because I didn't know what I was doing on the, the systems and processes. And now, now I'm like the number one business mentor in the country for tradesmen, construction workers, and small business owners. And Joe, you make this sound simple, but that is not simple. Making 32 grand... Uh, was one video, you know, I just want to delve into that a wee bit, you know, because that the sounds... was 40, so we kind of failed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but, but to see those different things, you know, that, that, that comes from creativity, obviously. Um, uh, and and uh, looking at your mindset and looking at the, the gaps in the market or looking at... You, you know, is it that simple just to do something like that so off the wall that, you know, people's going to give? Well, let, let, me, let me put that back to you, right? Is hmm. it that difficult not to do it? No, you're correct. It's not, no. No, like, like um, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say it, but, you know, someone will probably rob that. But if I'm going to write a book, I'm going to call it Caveman Economics, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right? And it's just, you, you big hairy caveman, you go out and you grab a stick <laughs> and you, you, you stab it into something and you drag it back to your cave and your big hairy cave woman wife, she cuts it up and cooks it on the fire while you go out and try and stab something else, yeah? I don't see any difference between, between us now and cavemen back then, except for a few different things. We have Wi-Fi and we have podcasts and we have contacts as payments <laughs> and all this sort of stuff. That's really what it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So the pattern is, is guess, keep it simple, stupid. Is that? I, I am the most uncomplicated human being that okay. you will ever, 
encounter, in my opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm difficult to put up with now if for doing business because, you know, if we set out for, for to get a result, we're fucking getting the result then the story, you know? So spotting the problem. So the problem I'm, I, I, I always say to my clients, like, I believe every single person has a superpower. I believe... I believe every single person on this planet has one thing that they can do better than anybody else they know. Right? And, you know, let's just, let's just break it down, you know. What one thing can you do better than everybody else you know? Um, possibly sell, possibly interview, possibly, you know, there's a few possibilities there, yeah. Yeah, and, and you might say sell, right? Or you might say interview people, which are specialists, but they're still kind of general, right? But you might be able to say, and, and that somebody might come up against and say, well, actually, you're not because I'm better or this better. But you could possibly be better at selling, I've got a blue highlighter markers to people in Donegal. Really, really specific, yeah? Mm. And once you find out what that superpower is, nobody can come near you. You know, my daughter's 10 weeks old. She's got a superpower already. Like, she's touched parts of my heart that I didn't even know I had in my body, yeah? Like, she like she just makes me stare at her for hours, you know, just looking at her like she turns her head on the maze, you know? And, like, that's her superpower because nobody else can do that. Mm. And as she, as she grows up, you know, she'll, she'll encounter her own thing. So we all have a superpower. And my superpower is I can talk to somebody for literally... 10 minutes, probably less about their business. And I can see exactly what the problem is with their business. And I know, generally speaking, what needs to be done. Now, when I say business, I'm talking about, you know, construction, 10 employees or less. Hmm. That's, that's exactly what I know. And, you know, I've, I've, I've yet to come across something where I can't deal with it, you know. So everybody has a superpower. Luckily for me, I can go off and... Uh, I've, I've, I've found a way to monetize my one and, and provide a good quality of life for me and my family from that, you know. Uh, the problem is most people don't, don't value their own value. They don't, they don't connect with people who would value their value. Hmm. You know, you could be the best podcaster in the world, but if you, if you talk to my father or my grandfather and you know, they don't give two fucks because they're not into podcasts. Mm -hmm. whereas I want to I download as much information from you about, you know, you're doing a great job here. I want to know as much as you can, as I can about it so that I can help improve my stuff, you know? Mm. So what you're basically saying there is niching down, really, really, really looking at what you're good at. And fuck everything else. Mm -hmm. Forget about it. And, Forget about it. And on your journey, you've obviously, over the last number of years, you've tried me different things and you've... You, you, been successful, not successful. How long has it taken you to, to, to really, really find that sweet spot? I think I, I don't think I found it yet. You're still. I don't, I don't. I don't believe I found it. Look, I've got, you know, I've got my, I've got my, my businesses. I've got my investments. I've got my properties. I've got my health and all that sort of stuff. You know, like we're talking about. You, you're basically saying to me how lo you know, how long did it take me to get to a really successful part of my business or whatever else, you know. <laughs> Success can't be bought. Like, it's rented every day, you know. And I don't believe that I've got, I, I don't, I'm, I'm still looking for it, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I get my 100 million, I'll go for a billion. And we'll, we'll keep pushing, you know. Mm. And that's the driving factor at all times for you. Yeah. That's it, you know, and, and it wasn't all, now in fairness, it wasn't always as easy for me as it is now. Like, you know, I walk out on the street, people come up to me, they see me, they want to talk to me, they're happy that they had an opportunity to chat to me. People come up and they take, they all they take selfies with you and all that sort of mad stuff, right? Because, you know, there's a certain kind of mindset of people who, who, who like what I'm about. And I'm now known as, you know, Joe the property guy, Joe the entrepreneur, Joe the guy that helps the builders out, you know, Joe the Facebook guy. And people know who I am and, and know what I'm about. And it's easy to get reinforcement when other people are reinforcing that to you on a daily basis, you know. However, when you're 
reinforcing yourself with that and you're, you're, you're 10 years in and all you've done is made yourself fucking bankrupt, it's a little bit more of a challenge, you know? Hmm. But you've, you've, you've obviously um, moved a lot of uh, the dailies of the people you mentor and, you, you know, you, you, what, what, kind of, what kind of questions would you ask them straight up, you know, where would you, where would you see those gaps and how would you identify those? So we're trying to give value to some of our listeners there now who might be thinking about yeah. starting, up, starting up their business. Um, what's the first couple of questions you would advise to sit down and ask yourself? Uh, or even you would ask, you know, in that regard. It's like, that's a very good question. And um, I was out running there today. I'm running this kind of like my meditation, you know. Um, mm. And uh, I, I was just kind of going through different scenarios in my head, you know. Do you ever hear the whole, fret, the whole saying, who are you when no one else is around? Mm. This is me when nobody else is around. Because I'm just thinking about ideas and stuff like that all the time. And... For people who haven't got a business, and let's say people who are really young, yeah, and they want to be entrepreneurs and they want to have a business of some sort, the most important thing you can do, in my opinion, is make as many is to make money as many different times as possible, as quickly as possible. Hmm. So let's say we're talking to a guy now who's 18, 90, 20 years of age, or we're talking to someone who's 30, 35 years of age and they've been an employee for years and they want to start their own business. I would be of the opinion that it's far more important to make 20 quid a day five different times a day than it is to make 10 grand at the end of a month when you're starting off. Because, you know, anybody can do anything once or twice, but it's to do it consistently. So if we get a guy, you know, regardless of his age, man, woman, where in the world he's from, if we can get him to make as make money as quick as you can get involved in as many transactions as possible like as you know it's the same amount of effort to sell something for 500 quid as it is to sell something for five grand so if we can get people to to carry out as many transactions as possible that knocks the cobwebs off helps them refine a few skills and it takes them away from trying to get perfect mm. you know ready fire aim simple as that we get perfect later on. Mm. So get the idea, get out and get at it is really the concept. You know, get at it. You know, like there's so much opportunity. Like what the technology has done is it's, it's broken down the barriers from, it's broken down the barriers of communication. Like we can take up our phone, we can ring as many people as we have their number. We can get, as, we can ring an unlimited, we can connect with an unlimited amount of people from our living room. And, we can effectively do that for like 20 or 30 quid a month nowadays. So it's effectively free, you know? So if a guy's getting going in business, just get something to market straight away. I would always advise. So for example, the Dragon's Den business, one of the, my biggest takeaways from the Dragon's Den business is I spent two years putting that together and it was like I was spent two years uh, setting up for a big party. And when I opened the doors to the party, nobody decided to turn up. And I said, right, fuck that. That's not happening again. So anytime I'm doing something, I'm quick to validate. Quick to validate all the time. How would you do that, Joe? How would you validate very, very quickly? What, what wee tips or tricks would you advise? Pick a profession. Uh, say, let me see. Obviously, we'll go with something you know, building. Suppose you, if, you're, if you're starting out and you're, you're a tradesman, obviously. Say, car yeah, carpenter. Write a post on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I've been doing a bit of carpentry there the last while as a hobby. I've got a few few hours free. Anybody need any odd jobs done? Off you go. There you go. That doesn't work. Stick a sign up. Mm -hmm. You know, ring people you know. Hey, if you need that done, give me a shout. Get as many transactions as possible under your belt, you know? Mm. You know and those and go ahead. No, so I suppose in, uh, in breaking those wee barriers down, like, you know, getting confidence in it, you, obviously you're, you're made of steel. Um, you don't care about the comments that people would say or, you know, um, getting through that. So, can, I, can I just tell you something on that there? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of beyond caring about negative comments, right, for a couple mm -hmm. of reasons. I've only ever got one hateful comment from somebody who was more successful than me. And the only way I know he was more successful was because he told me he was more successful than me, right? <laughs> right? 
you know, which, so he was like, the, you know, he was giving me grief. The chief, you charge you for your information. If anybody wants any help, give me a call for free. Right? I've only ever got one. So, you know, people who give hateful comments, they really give hateful comments because you're exposing a side of them that they're already weak at. Mm. You know, and uh, I was, I was uh, following a guy there recently on social media and he's been getting a lot of flack and I've been watching him to see how he's handled it. Mm. And uh, somebody said, uh, I won't believe that what you say is correct until you show me a bank balance with a million quid in it. And in fairness to himself, he took, took a screenshot like with a million quid and, and, and put it in the comments, you know. And then immediately after that, someone else said, sure, why wouldn't you have a million quid in your bank? You're scamming people and you're ripping people off and all this sort of stuff, you know? Mm. But that guy was fucked either way, you know? So don't, don't, don't worry about comments because you will mm. get them, you know? Just get on with it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And what's uh, on the horizon for you? Um, as I say, you, you, you've obviously just grown what you're doing or are you looking at different markets or what, what's... Um, What's, what, what's Joe thinking? What's going on when he's out doing his meditating, running, maybe running a hundred miles or something? Like I've, I've got, I've got a big, a big crossroads in my life, yeah. Because the question is, and again, I just learn stuff from mad scenarios. The question is, do I do something different, or do I just keep doing what I'm doing? Many, many years ago, I was actually sixteen years old at the time, so it's like twenty years ago now. I was out fishing with my uncle on the Liffey, and I was standing at the side of the river, and I was casting the rod out into the centre of the river. And uh, and the, I remember I was 16 because I used to drive down from my moped. And there was a guy on the far side of the river and he was trying to cast his rod as far over to my side as possible, you know. So I just had an idea. Let's just not cast it out into the middle and just drop it in over the side. And it was our most successful day fishing, you know. And people are always trying to get to the far side when everything they need is probably right under their nose, you know. So mm. that always goes around in my head. And... Right now, I'm like, okay, what should I do? Will I go after bigger things? You know, will I go after, I don't know, what am I going to go after, right? But, like, I can pretty much, like, buy a property, rent it out, make 50 grand on it without, without breaking a switch, you know? And I'm like, right, do I go and change that and do something where I can make 500 grand, or is it easier just to do 10 at 50 grand, you know? And for now, I think I'm... I'm at the point where uh, I'm, I'm operating in a little sweet spot where it's actually effortless to do what I'm doing because I'm so good at it, if that makes sense. Mm. So I'm thinking, do I go off and do something new or do I just do more of what I'm already doing? And at the minute, that's what's looking likely. I'm just going to do more of what I'm already doing. Um, like we've got, I said, 200 and, got 230 business coaching clients and about 50 property coaching clients and like what we do is like nobody can come anywhere near us with it because what we're teaching is what we've done ourselves to make our money and in the property space it's what we're doing right now you know so i just want to expand on that let more I, I, you know let more people get access to the success that's available out there if they just focus their energy in the right space you know um actually i'll tell you something there just about validating so uh it's my intention to, to start writing a book over the next couple of days. And the, the way we said we were going to do it, I'm not very good at, at writing. You know, my English is fucking horrendous as it is. I course too much. I use bad words and all that sort of <laughs> stuff, right? So, so sitting down with a pen and paper will be absolute torture to me. So I spoke to a guy and he said that if I record what I want to say, he'll help me put it in words in, 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 a, in a plain English manner, you know? So... What I'm going to do, and this is just a touch on validation, so I'm going to write the book and I'm going to do one chapter at a time and we've kind of outlined what it needs to be. And I'm going to record it on Facebook and YouTube. And then he's going to take the audio from that. And then the links at the end of the book, at the end of the video, will be pre-order your copy now. So every time I actually put the... You know, rather than wait until the book is completed and it's 100% finished, um, I'm validating every stage, if that makes sense, yeah? Mm. And then when, when I get more responses from, from, one particular, um, from one particular part of the book, I'll, I'll go in and I'll do more of that, you know? So uh, check it out. It'll be called The Tradesman Survival Guide. And if, if people want to order, they're probably by the time they hear this, it'll be 
it'll already be uh, be in production. Just go to my website, joedoyle.ie forward slash TSG, and uh, they can pre-order a book for free there, you know? So it's, a, it's, it's just an amazing hour, so we've had a chat, and we could go... We could go on, but I asked you what your next thing you want. I don't know, I might, might write a book. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 <laughs> you just don't give yourself enough credit. It was like you just um, you come up with these ideas and you make them work, and that's just that's just it. So, yeah, writing a book, it's a, it's a big deal. You see, it's, it's the logical next step. You know, it's not, it's not a big deal for me right now. Um, because everything I know just swears, and it'll probably it will probably be like a therapy session for me because uh, I'll be just basically taking the stuff out of my head and putting it in clearly defined chapters, you know, um, and we get that done. But okay, it's not that hard. You ask me to go and write a book about podcasting, and I'll be like, holy fuck, hmm. that's that's a big deal for me. Um, Look, when you look at it, if I kind of take myself out of the equation, I'm, I'm one of a, a small number of tradesmen who have actually made it. And when I say made it, I mean that in, the, in what other people say made it. I'm, I'm, right now, I believe I'm still making it. Um, other people will believe that I've made it, you know. Um, but there's not that many people out there have got this far who started off as a, as a tradesman. So I'd like, to, I'd like to drag a few along with me. You know, it's fucking lonely yeah. at the top of me, man, you know. And just through the conversation, Joe, it's, um, yeah, okay, I might have said about money not being a, a motive for you. Uh, obviously, um, there is a bit of a motive there, obviously, you want to be successful, but there is a side of giving back, is that a kind of a softer side of Joe coming through that we see as he matures as an entrepreneur, um, as, as, as you see tradesmen and you can offer value? Um, and obviously there's a lot of content that you do that might be a business element for you, but is there a sense of satisfaction there when you say, yeah, I helped that guy reach a, you know, a million or I helped him? Oh, like, 100%. Yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm fucking about making videos when I could be, you know, talking to people about doing property deals. And I'm definitely, I'm definitely losing money on the property side as a result of focusing on the mentorship because it's always better to do one thing rather than do two. But my reward for getting to where I'm at in my property space is that I'm allowed now to do my mentorship. And has that, has that been something that, that you've wanted to do? I suppose that's probably... I just, I just fell into it. I wanted to go see Grant Cardone and I wanted to go a full time. I wanted to go all first class and I didn't want to pay it myself and I wanted to get the money for that and then I wanted to go somewhere else and then look people message me all the time you know it's, it's a weird thing when some guy comes up to you and he quotes back to you something you said in a video a, a, a year previous and he's able to tell you how he made money from that you know that's that's really good I was listening to an interview the other day with uh, Robert Kiyosaki you know Rich Dad Poor Dad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and you know I'm, I'm not really a religious guy or anything like that you know I believe in the law of doing good and, and, and looking after people. But he, he was talking about this concept of you might want to be a, a property investor or a landlord, but God might want you to help others. So he was saying that, you know, he wanted to do certain things, but, you know, God, God wanted different things. And he was just using that because somebody had said that to him, God wanted different things. So, you know, I, I don't think I would... You know, if you said to me, look, Joe, you're leaving a million quid a year on the table on the property sense by, by doing this stuff, I'd be like, okay, I'll, I'll accept that. And I'll, I'll keep going. Mm. It's a nice feeling helping people, you know? Mm. Because your trade was in the doldrums back at that time. Um, obviously, a lot of people left the country. Um, they're still away. Um, oh, sure, come here, listen. I started my apprenticeship where a bricklayer was earning more than a doctor, yeah? <laughs> and then by the time I finished my apprenticeship, we were in recession and there was no work whatsoever except for what I had been... Well, you know, after two or three years, there was no work whatsoever except for what I'd been creating myself then, building my own houses. So you see all these things up and down. You know, I, like, I do say this to my clients all the time, and, and I genuinely mean that. Like, I'd be talking to a guy and I'd be like, look, do you want to come and do some work together? And, 
he might come with us for, for 30 days or he might come with us for an hour or whatever else, you know? And, and I have this thing that I don't do, I don't do any training for free. I don't care. Look, pay me fucking a tenner. You're not coming in for free, right? Because once somebody pays for something, they will, uh, they'll appreciate it. It takes on a different meaning. And I've done lots of stuff for free and people just don't turn up and they don't implement it. So I always make sure they pay something, right? And sometimes you'll be chatting to people and they would just, they would seize up at the notion of having to pay money to acquire the skill because they've never done it. And, you know, and I'm talking, you know, 99 quid for, a, for an evens training. And when we're, when we're doing evens training, and maybe I'm going to cost myself money for, for this, but when we're doing evens training, like, People make me an offer, I take them in. I don't give a fuck. Once they, once they pay something, they can come in, you know? And some people just won't allow themselves to, uh, to have that, con- to allow that to happen. And I pity them, you know? I just, I actually pity people because they're constantly trying to figure things out for themselves and they're not allowing themselves to get into an opportunity where they can learn. And if somebody gave people uh, content for free, and then they gave them the same content or training and made them pay for it. They will they will value what they pay for far greater than what they've uh, what they've got for free, you know. And that's a true statement. And um, obviously, there's people out there like that that doesn't grasp that. Joe, there is a there is a clear image coming here from from you. I think you're just trying to grab the population and give them a shake and go, look, lads, this is what's here if you do this. Um, Pop the fuck on. <laughs> tell, tell, me what the Im- tell me what the image is. I'm, I'm intrigued to know. No, I, knew no, I, I knew I would learn something more here tonight. Tell me what the image is. No, I just have you, I have, I have you a little image of, of you grabbing just the proverbial f- person in front of you and shaking them and going, uh, <laughs> listen, dude, uh, there is so much more opportunity on the other side of getting all the bullshit out of your, out of your head and just focus and start doing, really, you know? So, um, but, Joe, you, you really make um, things sound a lot easier, but I just want to, as I say, from the Breadwinners podcast we're just giving back some information uh to to uh to young entrepreneurs to existing entrepreneurs for people who want to get into business who are thinking about it um just in a in, in three different elements what would you you advise what would your first bit of advice from joe doyle right so just just ask me that question again so i answer it correctly give us three three things three bits of advice um that you would advise anyone He's looking or thinking about getting them to, to, to do their own thing. Or, okay, okay. The first, the first piece of advice is don't worry about fucking up, yeah? Because mm. you definitely will. <laughs> you know, don't, don't be afraid about making a balls of it because you most definitely will. And it's what you do after that that counts. That's, that's the first thing, you know? Um, the second thing is just pick one thing. Just pick one thing. That's what I'd say. Focus on one thing. Um, and then as far as the third one is, you know, always validate along the way. So, don't worry about fucking up. You definitely will. That makes sense? Definitely, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The second one is just pick one thing. People message me all the time and they're, they're maybe, maybe I need to be a bit more polite to them, but people message me looking for like pats on the back and high fives by telling me they've got like fucking five businesses and stuff like that. And I'm like, sounds like you suffer from a lack of focus if you ask me, you know? And uh, that's my reaction to them. Just pick one thing, get world class at one thing first and then do something else, you know? And then the third thing was, what did we say the third thing was there? We said, uh, uh, validate along the way. Validate along the way because I've made a balls of stuff by just going too far in one direction without actually, uh, without actually, uh, how would you say it? Um, yeah, just validating yeah, that I was doing the right thing, you know? Yeah, and that's obviously checking your market, your customer, your price, and uh, I suppose those things as well uh, is advisable. Yeah, just make sure that when you host a party, people want to come. <laughs> we, we can quote you on that one, Joe. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so like that's that's what goes. I still feel sore about it today. Like that. Like fuck. How did I not know nobody was gonna? I was not gonna get any customers into my business. You know. But, but I, you I still love, don't have the answer to that either. You know. But you love the fight, the tail, and uh, you, you, oh. you, never, you never know it. it I, I, be, I've learned. I've learned my lesson. You know. Joe, look, it's been uh, a great hour chatting to you. Thanks very much for joining us. I'll tell you what we do, what we can do, Porrick, if you want. Mm-hmm. You, can cut, you can cut what I'm about to say out of your podcast if you want, but it's, no, very okay. rude, it's very rude to knock up to a guy's house when he's, offered, when he's inviting you out for dinner and don't have a bottle of wine, right? So mm-hmm. what we'll do is, for any of your listeners, if they just message my Facebook page, Joe Doyle Entrepreneur, mm-hmm. and just write breadwinner, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll give, I'll, I'll send them 10 hours uh, business training. Well, that's very kind of you, Joe. That, is that fair enough? I think we've got, we've got this, little, this little training. We've got two trainings. One is a seven-day training, and the other one, I believe, has 10 hours in it. So they, if they just message me saying, breadwinner, I'll just send that on to them. And, and they can thank you for that then. Well, look, Joe, thank you for your honesty. It's been fantastic. And some real uh, insightful stuff, Joe. Um, we've, uh, we've uncovered this last hour or so, and you've been really honest and uh, down to earth with your information. And uh, I would uh, I would probably say there's been no bullshit there, Joe. It's all uh, it's, it's 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 all very real, and uh, we really appreciate that. And thank you very much for that. See you at the top, my friend. So, guys, thank you very much for listening in today. If you are struggling with any aspect of your business, do not suffer in silence. All good business owners learn from the mistakes of others, and trust me, I've made a lot of mistakes before getting to where I am today. You can ask me any questions you have by reaching out to me and messaging me on Facebook by searching for the Tradesman Support Group by Joe Doyle. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.